Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves as a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And finding our inner Barack and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce, or this episode. I'm super, super excited about this one. What you got? Lana MC Light, Mora. I give her a full name. You know, honey, she's married now. And John Winch. I hope I'm saying his name right. Winchy? Winch? W-Y-C-H-E? I'm going to say witch. Oh, you said witch? Yeah. Oh, anywho. They got married, um, y'all, just the other day. Aren't you so happy for that? I remember yes. last year when um, they were engaged. Well, first of all, y'all should know who Queen MC Light is. You know, she's mm. one of the founders, thought leaders. I don't even know what to say. Queen, you know, when we be talking about queens, we're at, folks don't be saying MC Light, but she's been there. Right for a minute in that john he's a marine corps veteran and an entrepreneur um they were married in an intimate um soulful i like their descriptions that they use a beach wedding in sandals royal caribbean resort and it was a party from the beginning to end so it was said that mc light walked down the aisle to a regular congo band kelly price was the one who sang during their first dance i wonder what she said I wonder what she's saying. I mean, mm-hmm. remember that song Kelly Price had? He proposed to me. Do you remember, remember that? Yeah. You know, Kelly got some bangers too. You know, also a friend of mine, but you know, that ain't appropriate right. for the wedding. <laughs> but you know, she got some bangers. <laughs> he's singing down the way. He was, was a, a friend, friend of mine. mine. I'm like, come on. Remember when, remember that whole genre with like, uh, um, Ronald Isley and R. Kelly, it used to be all this singing, like, this is Mr. Mr. Bitch. Oh, How you doing, okay, Mr. no, no, we supposed to be on MC Light. What the is going on? Focus. What do you mean, what's going on? Focus. Kelly's telling me Focus. that you're sleeping with another woman. Okay, thank you. I'm just not playing. because he's sleeping with it, just the me. Nero. Nero. I'm sorry, This baby. is about MC Light and John. I understand. Um, and their DJ was Jermaine Dupri. Hey. So I know it was lit. Um, but like said was it was a beautiful fairy tale and she got her king. So hey. as we were saying last year, the couple met online. Yes, online. Y'all know how Nayambi feel about online. Like I think folks should try it. I don't know if I trust it, but I think people should try it. And y'all see MC Light got it. So at the beginning of 2016, Light opened up herself to receive her husband. I guess she kind of co-founded this thing called a Wealth Experience Foundation um, for like women empowerment. And this is kind of this space where they like this, you know, that idea of manifestation. So say what you want, mean what you say and brought it to her. And a year later, she was engaged and married to them. So just shout out to her and him and just the way they doing it like mc light was always kind of low-key about it but she yeah. came and she killed it and i'm just so excited and she got her another black unicorn as Nero always says hey a marine what would i say he was again a marine court vet and an, and an entrepreneur. entrepreneur come on so he didn't left that army that, that marine or retired out he didn't left that marine and became a unicorn shut up <laughs> <laughs> anywho just shout out to them and their black love and that black newlywed it's nothing like um we had a good friend of ours um get, got married um actually in jamaica too i love a good destination when I, I think they're beautiful yeah i'm sure on the wedding you know the folks who are getting married it's it could be a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> but as a guest and also being in a wedding party it was amazing did you enjoy when we went to it jamaica? was lit what? The only time, the only thing I got to say about that is when that power went out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Niram, you just scary. I'm that not happens scary. in Jamaica and the islands, though. Like, they have brownouts. Because, you know, they run in that air 24 hours. The air and electricity and, you know, only so much going on the islands, honey. Are you going to tell the story? Didn't we tell this already? We ain't told this already. I don't know. I can't remember. <sighs> well, Niram, tell the story. Well, our good friend, I was in, oop. It's going on five, five years. years. Mm-hmm. Shout out to we're gonna have to get them and shout out highlighting black love. Story. Right, y'all listening? We know. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you want to tell the story? You tell it. Oh, Lord. So as I said, um, one of our good friends got married in Jamaica, so we went to support. Um, I was in the wedding, all this good stuff, and it was beautiful. Was it the night of the wedding or the night after? It was the night uh, after the wedding. It's the night after the wedding. So you know, we already kind of come in late leaning a little bit because it's a resort so of course they had like a reception and everything but you know the resort don't quit so after the reception we like well let's go get some more drinks um so we got in like kind of stumbled in the room and just kind of crashed and for y'all don't know near him he sleep hard but he sleep light so if i'm calling his name he ain't gonna call but if he anything else happened to popping off in the house he running downstairs like a zombie so about what four or five in the morning right before daylight the power goes out in a way, you know it is because all the air conditioning and everything is like 
broom. And I heard it too, but I went back to sleep because folks who traveled know that brownouts occur. Near, near, I'm gonna hit me. Nyambi, Nyambi. Did you hear that? Nigga, I'm buzzed. Um, I'm about to have a hangover. I'm trying to sleep. What are you talking about? The power went out. What are we going to do? Our stuff in the safe. Get up, get up. I'm getting stuff. This fool trying to get up, put on his plans. I'm like, where are you going? What flight is leaving? We can't go nowhere. He just lost his damn mind. He tripping over the bathtub, tripping over clothes, trying to get his passport out the safe. And I finally asked him, where do you want to go, Nero? Where, where are we going to go at four in the morning in Jamaica? Ain't no flights leaving. I'm not going outside nor walking down no damn stairs in this pitch black. So Niram lost his damn mind. What was what was you thinking? Nyambi. Yeah. Now you know I'm a nigga who ain't never been nowhere. I ain't been in no nice places. What? Been overseas and shit. Yeah. So when that shit went down, I thought it was going down. What did you think? What was it, what scared you was the sound of the power going out or what no. was it? Shit, the power going out. I'm getting hot because the ceiling fan, and the air it was went out on. literally for three minutes. No, it was hot. It got hot as hell. And the only thing I can think of was like, this is going to be a hotel Rwanda situation. And I need to be prepared. And then to make sure I got my cash, my passport. Just it's Jamaica. <laughs> what that, are you talking about? Like, what point, is happening? At that point, I didn't think of none of that shit. What you thought folks was coming in? Take your shit. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. And we was on the top floor. And I'm be asked. Don't you think they're going to go to everybody else's floor, uh, room before they come to, to ours? ours? Like, yeah, we was like up on, yeah, where were we on the highest floor? Yeah. Yeah, they had to go a lot of floors Look, to go to us. I was drunk. I was off of all the rum punches. All them Bob Marley's. <laughs> all them Bob Marley's and rum punches. That when the light, when the power went off, yeah. All I thought is I need to get the fuck out. Just fight or flight. He yes. decided to fight. And, and I decided I, to sit. I was like, just and, go to sleep. And you decided to sit. I'm over here about to get ready to fight. I'm about to fight he for my life. He put on clothes, y'all. And I'm like, just get a cool rag and sit down. I'm about to fight for my life in Jamaica. And you're talking about should I, we cracked the door? I said, don't touch anything. Just go to sleep. The power be on in less than an hour. Mm-mm. But when the power finally came on, lights on, here come near him looking crazy. Oh, I guess I go back to sleep now. Go back to sleep. Don't mess up my sleep. Anyway, who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 34. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Be sure to leave a five-star rating and review. One, two, three, four, five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. I know y'all listening. If y'all really like us, just go ahead and leave us that five-star rating and review, and we'll shout you guys out. Also, follow us on all forms of social media. Uh, we out there. We see y'all. <laughs> so go ahead and follow us. We at uh, Black Love Matters. Remember, that black that's black with no cat. Baby, what you got? Yes, yes, and thank y'all for that. You know, I like to thank folks for doing oh, that. It well, take time. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank y'all. Anywho, what's my check in? Y'all know I don't finally caught up on my shows. What we got to talk about is this insecure. What is going on, Molly? Molly, I'm actually proud of Molly. Molly, the real one in this episode. You know, I don't, I can't say for the next episode, mm-hmm. but in this one, she the real one. So Molly. Um, had this opportunity. What's his name? Dro? Dro. Yeah. Dro or Drew. One Drew of some of them. Start with a D. I guess he a good boyfriend or old friend, like, yeah. you know, from middle school, from growing up. And they just vibe. And I thought that energy was, they was vibing a little bit too well. Um, but at the end, you know, they was laughing, kicking and dancing. And then what he basically offered to was take her home. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, I don't think your wife would appreciate that too much. And he's like, we in an open relationship. Hey. And she was like, oh, I I don't know if I can do that. You know, you good people, but I don't know about that. I was very proud of Molly in this moment. Because uh-huh. I think that Molly from last scene was like, well, all right, let's go do this. <laughs> and the thing is, personally, when I looked at it, I don't have no problem with open relationships. If that's what you do. The only thing that really matters is between that person, the two people who have committed, right? Mm-hmm. As long as they have that agreement, I don't think nothing's being broken. But I think what Molly recognized and she treaded lightly on was, it's different when you associate it with these people. Mm-hmm. Remember we talked about that in the threesome episode? Yeah. You got to be careful when you know folks. Because that makes it very, very messy. So I'm proud of her. But, you know, it might open up next episode. She up in his bed. You never know. But I'm glad that she said no. I think that is very, yes, something you got to really watch yourself on. Is messing with other people, open relationship, and you know them personally. What do you think, Aaron? You don't think? You know, I'll go back and forth. I, I what? If Molly wanted to D. 
I think well, she was more or less uh, afraid of you know niggas be lying sometimes. I, <laughs> I gave him a benefit of the doubt. I I'm gonna call he was it. Lying. You know he was calm and things. So you know, but niggas would be pressing it. You can tell they be like, yeah, like yeah, I'm in an open relationship, telling everybody. Yeah, nigga ain't this shit. Find out his wife find out his ass in an open relationship. She beat the fuck out of him and then leave him. Yeah. Um, but niggas be lying sometimes. So yeah. you know, I think Molly was more or less on that. Like, is this nigga lying? Yeah. That's you know, a good way to even I, think about that. You know, do I get how proof? you ask him? Yeah, yeah. What was it written down? So that? you know, my thing was, you know, Miley knew her. She yeah. know him. She wanted to get the D. But she would have. She should have been like, "Well, call your girl up." <laughs> I want permission right now. All call right, call your Nero, girl up. Nero 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 for real. Nero and Bo. This is 2017. So be mo- yeah. be stand up in your shit. Be be if you're gonna be messy, be messy. Stand yeah. up in it and yeah. be like, okay, I want the D, but let me call your wife to make sure. Yeah. Ooh. I need to hear this. Yeah. You ain't got to say it's me, but I want to hear you say, um, so we have an open relationship, right? And I want her to be like, yes, we do have an open relationship. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. You said that nigga lying. You never know. I didn't even think he was lying. I just thought it would be, you have to tread lightly when you know people. Because mm-hmm. then how do you navigate if you go over Thanksgiving dinner? Hey, you just go over Thanksgiving dinner. Hell no. That'd be too hard for me. <laughs> Another thing, ladies out there, I don't know if y'all noticed. Did his voice match his face? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Like his, I don't. No, he wasn't an ugly guy. Like I don't want to come off shady like that or anything. Mm-hmm. But his voice was sickening. Like his voice was so darn sexy. And his face just didn't match his voice. Oh, Nero, I was going to ask you, did you think Nero? You had no comment. I believe the fifth. I I just it just some there wasn't connected to me. Mm-hmm. It just some his face. It maybe was his teeth. I don't know. Something just not wasn't connected with that voice. It was just something. And oh. don't get me wrong, he wasn't an ugly guy. It just didn't go. Oh. Well, like, you know, there I go now. That's a nice trend market to Issa. And on his online dating, who was that guy who came up and said, you don't look like your picture? <laughs> I'm worse than him. <laughs> you don't sound how I thought you was going to sound. <laughs> your voice don't match your face. <laughs> what was that about? At least she trying, though. At least she trying. Yeah, you know. <sighs> I- why you that was no inter- that was interesting because it's like you know what happened to your hair. Your hair he tried, you it. know, and I think one of the things is I was um I think I was talking to Nia about this about how some brothers be we all up in women asses about like they changing their hair and shit like that. And some yeah. of these brothers really can't respect a woman with natural hair, really? and the afro and things of that sort. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything ain't for everybody, mm-hmm. but I don't know why niggas is that hung up on it because it's, it's, it's a wonderful world of wigs. We can right. do whatever you want us to be. Cause he was all up on that hair, like yeah, he was just could not get through yeah, that. So when you gonna change your hair back? And then you look at that picture; she just had braids. That's... She had some regular cornrows. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Is a guy like a long blonde wig? Oh, right. what is it? No, but I, I actually can get past the hair. But when he talked about your voice, that's how I thought you. Was oh my sound. god! Ain't no. This is do you where... know, no? What do you say? Do you talk like that all the time? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you mean? See, that's how she a better woman than me. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? And I would have walked away. <laughs> I would have walked away. No. Do you look like this all the time? <laughs> Nigga, do you ask stupid questions like this all the time? Like, I would have been petty. So some of the things you, you got to pick up on this shit. So Kelly was calling this nigga Cat Bay because this nigga name is Felix. It's like you're trying to fuck yes. a cat. Cat Bay. <laughs> cat Bay. Yes. And then like when he said that about Issa's voice, she's like, you know, a couple months ago I did have a cold. Maybe it's still up in there. <laughs> stupid. But I was like, Issa, stop doing it. Stop being attracted to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then next, Issa, I'm just going to say it once. I'm going to say it again. Daniel ain't shit either. Daniel ain't shit. Y'all can say what y'all want. He funny acting. He look like he done got over it. He is over it. It's or been like no three months. Pretending. What do you mean? Like since Issa had sex with his ass? Yeah. So it's been like three months. Like, And she ain't been in no contact with his ass? He over that shit. And she ain't. Yeah. And then she thinking that they making cat cat eyes at each other from across the table, but he just giving her the heads up that his girl, her girl is getting her own little business service under the table. What is that? I know what well, while we both was watching it and we was like, What's happening? That's how we knew that we would get old. What's <laughs> happening? We dumb friends. Look, right. we Issa. That's right. I said the first time I identified with Issa in this whole season. Because I didn't know what was happening. I'm looking at her like, like what? Oh, I'm just shit. eating my pancakes. I knew something when Kelly got quiet. 
Cause she run that mouth. Every scene she and she run that mouth. Like I she forgot got what she part. was even talking about. She, but she was talking loud. Then she, she just went silent. Like some food or something. Because it's her cheat day. She done told everybody it's her cheat day. Honey. And what would you make me for dinner or something bullshit? And like they over there like, playing. Oh. And then he touching on the table. I said, y'all oh. too grown for this. Somebody need to go to go and wash their hands and clean that off. Okay. <laughs> what you thought about that? I was like, do people still finger each other after thirty? I guess so. <laughs> I'm getting too grown for that. <laughs> <laughs> What? I guess so. Yeah. I guess they. That's what the kids yeah. do. Millennials. Mm-hmm. It's still in. It's still in. Okay, humping with your clothes on. <laughs> Not dry humping. Yeah. Seems like it's in the same crew. <laughs> <laughs> it don't. No. Oh, okay. Dry, uh, getting fingered on the table is, is a different step than dry humping. What step is it? You know, dry humping. That's like dance floor type shit. Oh, okay. It's getting fingered. Shit. You might as well about to get ready for. It. Oh, thank you, Nero. You welcome. Um, what else was on? Oh, duh, my team no one continues. Lawrence, what the fuck is wrong with Lawrence? So first, we'll talk about this threesome. So he got it. So Lawrence done crossed over to Game of Thrones and got caught up with these White Walkers. One of them was actually Japanese, and so she was Asian. Aren't White Walkers from all the backgrounds? I guess so. (laughs) Like, what is wrong with Lawrence? I like I just can't with him. Like I have no words for how ditzy. Like he's what's a ditzy word for a man? He's a ditzy man. Fuck boy. Is fuck boy the word? Possibly, but yes. Like just from the point of going to the grocery store and not having his money, and then the girls be like, "We'll pay for it," and him being like, "Okay." Mm-hmm. It, it just going to the the house and not catching these subtle hints that they want to get down, and then looking like a poor puppy when they they abusing him. <laughs> or fetishizing him. Talk about let me look at your black penis. I was like, what? And then he like, ooh. No. What did <laughs> she say? That shit was hilarious. I'm like, she she two steps from calling this nigga, call him a nigga. I, Fuck me with your black cock <laughs> in my white hole. I, I just like, feel so the, full. I was like, what? I was like, oh, Ma'am? she about to call him a nigga. Any moment. I was going to call him like Kunta. And you can tell he ain't never been in no situation. She's talking about why you come? Yeah. Cause we having sex, so it's like I'm thinking to myself. So you, you ain't, you ain't even thought about this shit or nothing. Like you gotta no. prep yourself for this. No, cause that ain't something he do. You know, he you, ain't down for the threesome game. You, you know, you need to fuck off, beat or something, or you know, count or say the ABCs backwards or something it, like that. And then he talking about just give me a minute, right? And then they just then, then they gonna be bold to stare right. and look at him. <laughs> and then what they say? We gonna call Tyrell? Yeah, Tyrell's amazing. <laughs> talking about we've been with other black men, never ever to come and keep going. Oh. And he just looked crazy. He just did Lawrence things. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, he just did Lawrence things. Yeah, that was just crazy, though. I'm like, so you ain't going to prep yourself? No. You ain't going to even He don't think past control, the moment and anything. Control yourself? But I think that just goes back to, I think, why. I think it's bothering me with Lawrence because he's technically single, but he's emotionally attached. Mm-hmm. And he's not recognizing Yeah. That. So... By being technical, technically single, he's going through all these motions, navigating through this, but he's still emotionally attached. If it's not to Issa, it's the relationship, or he mm. hasn't fully went through it, right? So then he goes to seek out situations like this, where he thinks he's going to be filled up in love, and at the end, he ends up feeling worse than he began. No, his homeboy is a real MVP. It was like Clarence. That, was, that light-skinned boy? Yeah, when he texted him, he's like, nigga, what? 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 <laughs> I would have said the same thing. One of my homeboys like, look, dog, I can't come over. I got these two white girls. What? And we Well, buddy. who's the friend to be like, who are these bitches? How do I know you're going to make it out alive? That's the female friend. Well, <laughs> that's me on the other yeah. end. Yeah. I'm Nia's um, cock blocker. Yes. All right. Is this safe? I don't try- Take a picture of them. You know, Naomi is good for a cock block. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Mm-mm. It's been a few times you didn't cock block some friends. And I'm like... Nah, I mean, you just got to let this happen. No, y'all can't have sex because y'all going to complain to me when y'all both get strung out. <laughs> Nyambi, you can't be stopping people. If they want to get it on, let them get it no. on. So you be that friend. Mm-hmm. Those two white girls, what? what? Do you need me to come through? <laughs> no, Nyambi. He about to have a threesome. He about, about to be about this threesome life with these white girls. Oh, Jeez. a white girl and a, 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 and a white uh, Asian woman. These are the White Walkers? <laughs> I was like, it was too close to Game of Thrones. It was all running together. 
but so that was insecure like i thought this was a good episode it was a very mm. interesting episode like i'm interested to see what like the next step like yeah. I feel like we're building to this peak and I'm curious, like what's this turning point going to be in the episode? I mean, gotcha. the season and moving forward. Mm-hmm. Nets, claws, brilliant, brilliant with a T. It was renewed. I'm so excited. That's like it was I'm... a season finale. And the biggest things that got me was one, Karuchi. What's her name? Karuchi. Karuchi. Fine. Um, she done got knocked up. We don't know if it's by Roller or we don't know if it's by um, Dean. Dean, the little slow boy. What type of shit is it? Dean and love that child, honey. I don't know where he gonna take him to. I don't know. But he gonna love that child. And what's she gonna do with the child? I'm betting it's Dean. What? I'm betting she let Dean shoot the club up. Why is she so this is what I'm talking about. Because you know how people would be like, oh, you know, he you know, he 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 um what's the word I'm looking for? You can't say handicap because that's a bad word. What? Um, what do you mean handicap's not a bad word? Oh, I like thought... uh I mean, I think it's the context yeah. in which you use it. So he's a person with disabilities. Yeah, mentally challenged. Yes. <laughs> um, Why you saying like it was something else? No, but you know, I'm just trying to find the, the proper to be word for it. Inclusive. But I can't find it. So let's yeah. just say mentally challenged or yeah. a person with mental disabilities. That sounds a lot better. Yeah. She was thinking, well, he got these mental disabilities that, that his swimmers don't swim. No, that's a lot. See, that's her slow self there. She need to be the one who with the mental uh, capabilities. What you? What I got to do with sperm? What did I have to do with sperm, ma'am? Not knowing his ass got that kamikaze sperm. <laughs> it's probably been pent up, honey. <laughs> so he waiting, okay? Yes. He waiting, unlike Roller, who it give away for free, right, all the time. And you know he got them drugs in the system, so you know. <laughs> you said them drugs them killed them mm-hmm. off, you know, huh? them like like brain them. cells yeah. it cut off his sperm yeah you silly so that's something like at the end that got me i'm curious how they're going to pick up the second season um and also i you know what hurt my heart about this and i know we gotta have a third season so it just couldn't end nice why niecy can't or desna can't get out the hood i don't know why she can't leave the game i said the hook the, the, hood. Hood, the hood why can't she get out don't you, ain't you room for her to get out the game yeah I am. Like, that's some real life shit there. It is. Like, it's hard. And I think it is the vicious cycle that a lot of people go through. Mm -hmm. You know, we get so close and work so hard that, you know, be it self-sabotage or, like, other situations that pull our ass right back into the same fucking situation. Yeah, yeah. So, that kind of, that triggered me a little bit. Not necessarily that I'm in that situation, but I think, like, families and friends was like, dang, you could taste it. You were Mm -hmm. so close and then right back to it. Um, but I am excited to learn more as the, se- the next season, season two, um, goes up because her little Dr. Bay, mm-hmm. he looked like he in the drug game. But I'm really excited. They bring in the culture to it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's going to be the Haitian influence or what. I think it's going to be the Haitian or Jamaican influence that's going to come mm-hmm. um, next season. And I cannot wait for it to have more brown folks on that screen. Because, like, remember we told y'all before when we first started reviewing the show? It's heavy in, like, Southern Florida culture. So what is is to be Southern Florida to the T? So from the way they talk, the food they eat, the fashions, hairdo, so all of that. So I'm mm-hmm. really excited to see if they put like this Haitian Jamaican influence and what we about to see with that because I know they about to turn it the hell up. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, but lastly, just getting ready to travel. Um, as y'all know, before I travel, I always get a little sick. I'm not sick yet, but I'm tired. Like mm-hmm. I'm super super tired. So I'm gonna try to you know get a little bit of extra sleep, take a couple naps. But we're getting Detroit. Here we come, honey. Here we fucking come. <laughs> That's another reason this episode might not be super long either. But Detroit, right. here we come. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nero? Um, there's some great things coming yeah. in the universe. Even though uh, Mercury might be in retrograde, there's a lot of good things coming. There's a lot of positivity coming my way. Yeah. And Mercury in retrograde ain't necessarily a bad thing. No. It just got to be. You have, you're just very in, t- very in tune with your emotions mm-hmm. and your emotion, con- emotional connection to the world. And for most people, that ain't a good thing. So, you know, <laughs> there are some things I just need to put out in, in the universe and just put some things that I want in the universe out there yeah. so the universe can know and can conspire to make that happen. So, yes. you know, I've been looking at our numbers and we are doing what I think is great. So, you know, we had some like, si- well, I had some silent goals and milestones. Yeah, because... Um, Nyambi did it. Nyambi no. was just to come on every three days is to vent, 
do my work, do my self care, and keep it moving. Honey. Mm-hmm. So you know, I I think it's time to like put everything out there and just make it plain. So you know, we've already exceeded our first ten thousand downloads. What? And that happened like in the first month and a half to two oh my months. Goodness. So I'm you lucky. know, thank y'all. It is so. Thank y'all. So yeah. you know, for me, like my next goal and or milestone is to get like ten thousand downloads in a month. Oh wow! Um, so that that I feel like it's either gonna happen this month. Or next month, but it's going to happen. Oh. And I think, uh, you know, after that, I have like these other milestones that I'm just going to put out in, this, in in the universe, let them happen. So, you know, another milestone or goal for me or for this podcast is to get uh, a thousand downloads per episode within the se- within seven days of it, of it being published. Oh, you can tell this your wheelhouse, yes. honey. Wow. So very specific, like with so yeah, within that's only like, wow. So within a week of an episode being published, it already get a thousand downloads. Wow. Um, and then you know one of the like big personal like the big goals that really scare me. Yeah. Um, well, them to be the yeah, best ones, honey. It, and this one is is definitely it's having fifty. To a hundred thousand downloads per episode within seven days of it being published. What? Yes. Wow. 50, 50 to a hundred thousand downloads oh. per episode within oh. seven days of being published. Wow. I think that'd be dope. Um, and not only you know to make a living from this podcast and the products that we produce from this, but also you know make a an abundance of money that we're able to be a blessing to the community. Come on. And give back in a way that we couldn't even fathom. Yeah. I think I'm big. I just want to be able to give back yeah. to, you know, the community. Like, I know we teased and doing, like, a Black Loves, like, meet and greet. Mm-hmm. Like, I, th- I just I just want to invest all my money back into the community. Yeah. And, you know, through that, use the podcast to do that. So, you know, especially, you know, what's going on. You know, we ain't talking about, we said this was an anti-45 episode, y'all. So, we yeah. ain't going to talk about it. Friday and Monday, we may bring him back up. We know he done cut crazy, so we ain't ignoring it. But, mm-hmm. I think just through him, he done showed me all things are possible. <laughs> <laughs> all things. All things are possible. possible. All things. He's, he's, he's taught me all things are possible until you cannot depend on these ideas of hierarchy or other folks to take care of you or your community you have to step in yeah. and your community has to put infrastructures into it so i think you remember what we were talking about before i see this podcast as the way for us to physically emotionally spiritually get back to our community mm-hmm. and be able to do it unapologetically does that yeah. make sense it, it so does. that's kind of what my goals are um as i'm interpreting your goals yeah. i should say you know, and that's definitely something, yeah. you know, to as flesh I think out about more this, what Niran was saying, why you know, we what think it's important. And yeah. And that's what that's what I mean by being a blessing to the community yes. and giving back in a way that I can even fathom. So yes. I have even thought of the idea yeah, on means. a way yeah. uh, to give back. You know, I have ideas in my head, like, you know, you know, when we start doing live shows, I know it's going to be a little bit different. You know, we may even have a you know, green light, red light, stop, what's it called, like a stoplight type of event to like yeah. do matchmaking and things of that yeah. sort. I don't know, I, I you know, and, and, and also like, you know, just giving back to the community, yeah. just in general. I'm just even interested in just connecting with other folks to help them find what they want to do. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I know we always tease about other folks starting their podcast, but I want to be connected to all of them yeah. so we can almost create this idea of like an alternate economy together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, just do things together, and you know, I don't know. It's just thank you, forty five. <laughs> so you know, I, you know, so for some of the things, I definitely got specific, and I'm putting out. And this is me putting out into the universe, so it can conspire uh-huh. to all happen. Yeah. You know, and I, I see all this happen within the first year of us podcasting. Wow! All right. So you know, this is what I'm doing. I believe in alchemy, and this is me doing it. All right. So universe start working <laughs> um other than that you know watch power power was a a decent episode so i don't know if y'all know but um some episodes of power got leaked what yeah how they get leaked i don't they know they leaked them yeah it might be the wrong thing how you doing for it no nah. i was thrilled <laughs> nah. so i end up seeing good. like some of the scenes on facebook and like just looking at how last episode played out yeah it's playing out for something uh that that's well, gonna don't be give it away. I'm not yeah. gonna be a spoiler and, and uh and and spoil it for y'all, but I know what's gonna happen and y'all ain't going y'all ain't gonna even figure it out. 
y'all ain't gonna expect this. Yeah. So this is the episode that's really gonna change everything. So like looking at um that like and it just it just, it just popped up in my Facebook timeline. I was just scrolling and it was like I think I do remember folks talking about his league. I was like, what is y'all? Yeah. Do? Don't it come out on Sunday? Relax, Negroes. Relax. Well, these fools and put it on Facebook. Oh Lord. <laughs> So, I know all the creatives was losing their mind. <laughs> I know all the creatives had their Instagram stories up. Talk about the creatives. We don't get no money from the Oh, Lord. Oh. So, you know, you just scrolling and all of a sudden oh, a video pops up. You and, just, it's, well, I guess and it's I'll, power. <laughs> like, what is that, Tyreek? <laughs> I might as well stay for it. Yeah, I might as well watch for a little bit. So, well, you know, I didn't watch. I watched some of the scenes and it's going to be interesting. Uh, what else? Other TV news. Shout out to Shonda. Yes. She's moving on to Netflix. I know that some of the stuff like uh, points. like scandals in this last season, next mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on with Grey's Anatomy. I haven't watched oh, that since. Oh, that's going on for 20 years. Like undergrad. Me. The things with Grey's Anatomy, I feel like it's like um, Law and Order. You can just jump into yeah. it. That's what I did a couple times last night. I was like, oh, what's happening? Okay, I'm up to date. So, um, I, and I, I know Grey's Anatomy is staying on ABC, but I know she's supposed to be making like new TV shows strictly uh-huh. for Netflix. And I'm excited. And I can't wait till these shits come out because Shonda is queen when it comes to She ain't to let shit. me down yet. Oh, actually, the only thing I will say that I, actually, I can't say she let me down. I just decided not to watch it. What's that show, Star Cross Lovers about Romeo and oh, Juliet? Oh, yeah. I missed I that haven't one. watched it. It might be good, but it just did not speak to my um, spirit in the show I wanted to watch. Yeah, I didn't watch that one, but I watched The Catch. I like The Catch. Um, Grey's. Yes. Um, what else? How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah. Um, Scandal. Like, I. She can't do no wrong. No. Not even with the star cross love, she can't do yeah. no wrong. I figured that some of the folks would like that. Yeah, she queen. So yeah. uh congratulations to you, Shonda. Uh looking forward to see what happened on Netflix. Woo yeah. woo. Uh, and then, you know, like you said, getting ready getting ready for this whirlwind. So by the time y'all hear this, I'm gonna be in Detroit, either running to a rental car and driving to a funeral or chilling with some family or whatever, whatever. But it's gonna be whirlwind these next couple of days. It is. Yeah. It is. We're good mm-hmm. stuff. No complaints. Yeah, so guess what? Yeah, what? We got a black love story. I know. I'm so excited. Um, as always, go to blacklovematters.com black, backslash love story to submit your black love story, and we'll be sure to shout you out. Mm-hmm. You want me to start near them? You want, if you want to, or I, I can give a, All uh, right, a go brief ahead. introduction, and then I can tell you where to jump in at. So uh, we got a, a, a submission from one of our favorite listeners, Corey. Corey, shout out to you, brother. Uh, we really appreciate it. So he submitted this uh, black love story of one of his good friends, uh, Harold and Karen Jordan, and they are celebrating their 19th year anniversary Come today. On. Come so on. it was either today or when y'all hear it, it was yesterday. Yes. Um, they reside in Johns Creek, uh, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta, and they have two kids, uh, CJ and Chloe, and CJ is going to be a freshman in college next year. He put it real work then. Yeah, he is. Come on. So uh, so the reason that Corey sent this to us is because every year on their anniversary, they both write these um, prolific posts on Facebook that are incredible and inspiring uh, to all couples out there. And this and this year, it didn't disappoint. Um, so are they almost like write new vows to each other or something every year? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, from what Corey said is that, you know, they do these posts. Um, every year and they've been doing it for a while and there's more or less like a tradition like as a vow for their love to each nice, other nice. and you know what he told me was that these shits were uh well, i want to say shits but you know <laughs> thank these, you <laughs> That's what I'm I'm so, love you know, loves about each other <laughs> near, damn y'all know i got the speech impediment i'm trying to work on it and sometimes a cuss word just come on out but these uh posts you know are are, are inspiring and it said it inspired him and he he, he thought that they kind of remind him of us. Mm. So, you know, he sent it to us and, you know, we can get into that. So, um, would you like to read Karen's post? I do. Before do, before we get to that, do we have any, like, traditions that we have? I feel like we need to start a tradition. Now. I know, right? You know I love a tradition and a ritual. I know. Well, y'all, y'all don't know, Nayambi, but if any, if we do anything two times in a year or two times in a row, <laughs> it's a tradition. It's a tradition. I love traditions and rituals. Mm-hmm. It's just something about it I love. Because yeah. it's nice keepsakes. You can kind of keep like longevity of it. Yeah. So I really like that idea. You want to do something like this? Yeah, we should. This might be fun. I kind of like this idea. We might have to marinate on it a little okay. bit. But I kind of like it. Mm-hmm. Well, what I'll do, you want me to read both of theirs? Yeah, you can. All righty. So as Niram said, they write kind of these posts to each other 
declaring their love. And Karen's words are, so every year my husband tries to outdo me and writes these incredible tributes of love for me and our family and friends are overwhelmed and inspired by his words. Well, this year will likely be no different. Harold, your words always reflect your heart and I'm always confident in knowing your love, protection and support in all we do. I know that I'm different, difficult, and diligent. Mm, that's a word. <laughs> Come on, sis. I know that I am different, difficult, and diligent in most of what I do, which is good and bad. But there you are, shaking your head and giving me all you have to give. Even though it took me more than a month to get you to go out with me, I thank God you saw fit to give this 3D girl, meaning difficult, D- different and diligent a chance and best believe I thank God you were willing to stick with me for 19 years the way we are worked so well people ask me all the time how we do it I just explained that you're a saint and put up with a lot it's funny because it's true we have a ton of memories and good times to reflect on today I love you. I appreciate you. I need you. Happy 19th wedding anniversary, my mm. love. Yes. Emoji, emoji, emojis, brown people. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you laughing? That's what it is. <laughs> sis, sis Karen came here with a word. She said, I know that I am different, difficult, and diligent. Mm. That is a word. And also, I think what part about got, got this is at the end, to me, she said, I love you. I appreciate you. I need you. Mm. Come on. It's something about that need. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What you thought about what she said? It was dope. It was definitely heartwarming and it, it made my heart smile. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's hear Harold's words mm-hmm. to Karen. Harold said, I spent the better part of my life with a woman that I've helped and will continue to do, I continue to hold so near, dear, and passionately close to my heart. A woman whose beauty, intelligence, kindred spirit, talk it, walk it, and repeat it three times again, backwards and forward, personality that you either love or learn to love, but hate, you never could do. Come on, Mm -hmm. right there. A woman so unique, so divine, and as rare as forthcoming, Oh, as rare and as forthcoming as the August 21st total solar eclipse. Yet, unlike the eclipse, I can gaze upon my son without the need for optical assistance or fear of ocular damage. For the image I see is soul soothing, visually immaculate, impeccably stunning, and destined for classical destination. Karen, we started this fairy tale 19 years ago today, and I still get chills every time I think about once upon a time. To know it, to know how it started, live in the moment of it, stare down, battle, and slay the beast and obstacles that tried and failed miserably to rewrite our story. And continue towards, but nothing but by, but nothing but the grace of God, happily ever after, is more than I ever could hope or dream for. I love, love, love you for eternity, babe, far surpassing the expiration date of affinity. Happy 19th anniversary. God damn. Gerald. Wow, Harold can go to Etsy and open up a shop. I know, right? And just write vows, <laughs> exactly. And love notes to folks. Harold, can, Harold need to uh, start his own What's card these company. Metaphors he did with the solar eclipse. Man, he said you was. He said a woman so unique, so divine, and as rare as the forthcoming August twenty first total solar total solar eclipse. Yet, unlike the eclipse, I can gaze upon my sun son for the without the need for optical assistant or fear of ocular damage for the image i see is so soothing visually immaculate impeccably stunning and destined for classical destination what panty dropper look, look, look be quiet <laughs> sound of panty dropping <laughs> sounds of the draws hitting the ground wow yeah that was dope yeah i, I see why uh cory sent this to us because oh. this is it's, Isn't that so good? Oh my good! Wait, can we do a, so we can Instagram this or something, or maybe like connect the couples or the couple that you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, and put it on Instagram so folks can really see it. So you know, I know I said it, uh-huh. but even reading it, you'd be like, mm-hmm. "Wait a damn minute now!" It, it's, it's some deep shit. Even at the end, I love you for eternity, babe. Far surpassing the, the expiration date, date of affinity. 
Where he come up from this shit from? Who is he a poet? I don't know. What do he do for a living? Man, he better than some of these rappers out here. What? He got metaphors. By, he got bars, by, son. He do got bars. He got by. metaphors and he symbolism does. in this bitch. <laughs> come on, that's beautiful though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's that black love we're talking about. That's mm-hmm. that unwavering. That that's that sexy. That's that cool. That's that soul touching show show soul shivering type love we're talking about like this is what we're talking about love this is mm-hmm. this is what this is the epitome of what we mean when we say black love matters and to put this on the front street and share this with other people like thank y'all so much mm-hmm. um for sh- sharing this um Corey and a special shout out to karen and harold yeah like you, the words that y'all have for each other are just goals it is come on Dang. we should have said and then i think on friday we're gonna be like we want to be like karen and harold i know right <laughs> you know we're gonna pick out our favorite quotes from them <laughs> i know right <laughs> and just say back and forth all right we also asked them one more question too then we know yeah mm-hmm. um so you know when asked what advice would you give any couple newly married or in a rough patch uh, here's what they had to say uh when starting out uh we feel there are two primary things you can turn a good thing bad quickly finances and communication well that's a word i yes i completely agree but go ahead there are primarily two things that you can turn a good thing bad very quickly Mm -hmm. finances and communication Uh, know your financial situation set a budget you both can agree on plan for tough times and stick to a savings plan Mm -hmm. i think that's a word in itself right there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. personally uh, we each have our uh, we each have our accounts and contribute to a joint account. We have a maximum amount that we can spend without having to discuss uh, discuss it with one th- one uh, one another. Meaning we don't have to talk about spending twenty dollars, but we uh, do need to have a conversation if one of us uh, needs to spend two hundred dollars. We got something like that. Yeah, we do. Uh-huh. Um, for the most part, this is. A courtesy, but it depends on your personal situation. Uh, talk about it up front so there's no uh-oh moments later. Uh, this brings me to the next point: communication. Talk about everything. Your uh, talk about everything: your past, your wants, needs, desires, dreams. Uh, how you like your eggs? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like <laughs> mine's like Gordon Ramsay. How he cook it? Shut up. Uh, you need to be able to. De- to discuss things calmly and openly. Uh, know your partner's styles, style and ways. Uh, the old saying, never go uh, never go to bed angry, is one to live by. Uh, discuss your thoughts and feelings and explain why to the best of your abilities in order to make sure your point is understood. Uh, this goes a long way to create understanding. Be slow to, uh, be, be slow to anger and uh, speak but quick to forgive and listen. Mm-hmm. Mm. I finish it up. In tough times, good communications habits can bring you back from the brink. Approach the situation with love, understanding, and compromise. We have learned that putting the other's need before your own pays back tenfold. Be generous to your partner and know that you have what you have is forever. It is easy to navigate a storm you know will end. Love unconditionally. Mm. Come on. I mean, right there. It was so many tools and pieces of advice that they gave right there. So I totally agree with you, Niram. I think communication and finances are a huge thing, and it can make or break a relationship if you're not completely upfront and transparent with what goes on. Mm -hmm. And I think that the communication piece helps inform the financial piece of it. Yeah. So, you know, that's little things. It don't matter if you got a little bit of money or a lot of money. You consistently have to communicate. Because you can be poor together, but you can't have some – no past due bills and you're not telling your spouse right them, that's the first person you go to this mm-hmm. your ride or die you know so i'll say that's triggering first problems if you're in a relationship and you're hiding financial information from especially if it's either you're in a committed relationship or you're married you know like what type of um mess is that and i also think that's something that we do too near them, is that spending what you say we both have our own separate accounts but we also have a joint account together mm-hmm. and that's how we kind of operate it was our budget like 150 we said it was over 150 yeah. or did we say 200 too i think it was 150 so anything over 150 like they said it's not that we're asking permission 
but it's a courtesy to each other. Yeah. And I, it's been times that we're like, oh, yeah, you had to tell me that. Yeah, if yeah. you want to do that, go ahead and buy it. But other times I'd be like, child, mm-hmm. no, I don't think you need a pair of Kohans. No, I don't. I don't think that's a priority. They on clearance, though. And, <laughs> for one fit? No. One forty nine ninety nine. You been you been talking with the cashier trying to get them down. Can you take a dollar off? Right. No. So I thought that was um, huge too. And I like really what they said when they said talk about everything: your yeah. past, your wants, your needs, your desires, your dreams, how you like your ads. And I thought that was funny um, because a question I always ask Nero when we're just sitting or we're just around each other is, "Tell me something that you never told nobody else." Mm-hmm. And that's how we really got to know each other more and more. Remember, I've been doing that for years. I know. We're finally getting to the point where you be like, what do you say, Nero, when I tell you that? I don't have nothing else. <laughs> I've told you everything. <laughs> deep, dark secrets, everything. And the thing is, it could be deep, dark secrets or it could be just, just something, something random. That random. That you just never told nobody mm-hmm. else. So you know, sometimes I would just be trying to get to jump on that and be like, Blah, 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 blah. Your turn. Which, <laughs> Tell me something y'all don't know about you. And it don't work. It mm-hmm. does not work. And the idea of not going to bed angry is to live by. Um, discussing your thoughts and feelings and explaining why and the to the best of your ability, why that's important. I think that's a huge one. I think something that happens in relationships is when you get so pissed with the person that you shut down. Yeah. You should shut down and you don't want to be bothered with them. And I think that's when a real crucial breakdown occurs because you, you got, it's like you're almost giving up on them. Yeah. And it's like, you know, what, what are you, what, what is a person supposed to do with that? You both can't fall out of love at the same time. That's where um, it goes bad. And also the idea of putting each other's needs before your own pays back tenfold. Mm. I think that's important. You have to want so much for that person and they have to do the same for you. Yeah. But what I think happens sometimes when folks get burned is that they put a lot of in- energy and initiative into someone else and they don't do the same. Yeah. And that's when, as we like to say, um, Nia's taught me this, when your love bank go empty. <laughs> so you keep giving um, money out your love bank to somebody else thinking they're going to fill you up, then you empty. Yeah, you empty. But this also kind of remind me of uh, what the Tama- uh, Tamala and what's, I can't think of the dude, Mans. Mm-hmm. The Mans. Yeah. Like how they was talking about, you know, I'm always trying to outdo her and she's yes. always out trying to You want somebody me. that's like yeah. that. Yeah, that's you have to look for folks who are willing to do that and not someone that you got to tell necessarily how to take care of you and what that looks like. Those are all um, key points. And also this idea of um, being generous to your partner. And it's I think the biggest thing that got to me is at the end when he when they said it's easy to navigate a storm, you know, will end. Mm. Come on, all storms come to an end. Hey. In knowing how to stay steadfast in that, mm-hmm. I think that's the kicker in relationships. It is. How do you stay steadfast when the walls are crumbling in? Mm. Personally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. Yeah. That's the make or break of relationships. You know, it's easy to be together in a relationship when everybody working, <laughs> when everybody happy. Right. When everybody healthy. You know, Ooh. but. But when when that other stuff started coming apart, that's what really shows who win it to win it mm. in relationships, I believe, yeah. from what I've seen. True that. You know, and looking at folks who go through rough patches and be like, child, what y'all going to do? This is what you signed up for. But that's just some pieces that stood out for me. Um, Nero, what you, you want to tie this into pillow talk or what you thinking? Yeah. Maybe so- a good topic. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and tie this all up into this pillow talk. So I figure mm-hmm. out, you know, first shout out to you, Harold and Karen. Thank you. Congratulations on 19 years. Yeah. Here's to another 19 years. Um, y'all killing it. Y'all definitely hashtag goals. Yes. Um, so in the spirit of um, our black love story today, you know, I figure we, you know, we should talk about like how we witness, you know, communication between uh, your, your parents growing up and, you know, how that affected you know our communication styles today Uh and then also provide like some tips or you know some tips to you know to the listeners to help communicate with their partners okay so what you think so you know some of the things that you know i I had written down Uh is like you know so how did your family or you like your parents like handle conflict when Uh it came to communications Uh and how did that affect your communication style with me um, so I think my parents did a very good job about handling conflict. So what they did, I've noticed they very rarely argue in front of me. Mm-hmm. So when I mean argue, I mean all out argue. So we ain't talking about maybe talk back. Mm-hmm. So as y'all know, y'all have met my mother, y'all met my father. My mother is the queen of talk back. 
So I've seen her give talk back. <laughs> but it's the difference between talk back and arguing. Does that make sense? It was never, my parents were never in front of me, like calling each other out their name, being disrespectful. That never happened. Mm -hmm. Disagreements, yes. Absolutely. I don't agree with X, Y, and Z. This is, this, this is why. But never being disrespectful. And I want to make that clear because my parents, they would kid with each other. Like if they're playing, they might call each other out their name. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But in an argument, that's when they curse the least. And I thought that was something that was always really unique about them. Now, if they playing, just sitting on a patio, watching TV, kicking, having a good time, everybody cussing, you know, cussing, laughing, all that. But in an argument, I feel like they always played fear. They never cussed or called each other out their name. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's something that I t try to take into our relationship. I maybe don't always do it as well. Mm -hmm. But when I'm upset or arguing, I really try not to hit below the belt. Like, I really try not to start calling names and nick of this and you star. I really try to do that. And I definitely learned that from them. Also, I learned from there is that not only the importance of arguing fairly, but also the importance of arguing privately. Mm. So, you know, if folks be out with me and Niram, we're not the type that Niram might say something I'll disagree and I would disagree with it. Like if he's talking crazy, I will disagree with it, but I won't disagree with him to the point where we're arguing or embarrassing you or y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all been out with couples and you'll be having a conversation. It don't got to be that serious. And they'll be like, I told you I don't like the corn. And they'll be like, well, eat the <laughs> corn. They'll be like, eat the motherfucker. You'll be like, wait a minute, not over corn. I try to also not to do that. So near him, no, there's been times that he's rubbed me the wrong way. And I've disagreed. You know, I'm not one of the women who be like, oh, whatever my man say goes. No. And we'll be out with folks. I'm like, no, nah, near him, I don't agree with that. You know, you know how you be, you crazy, blah, blah, blah. And we would just continue the conversation from, from there. But as soon as we cross the threshold of our home. Sure, I wouldn't even say that. I'll say as soon as we get in the car. Ain't nobody I'm going to be like, hold up, wait a minute. What the hell did you mean when you said X, Y, and Z? So I I think when it comes to conflict, I've learned um, that from my parents, the importance of keeping that private because you can't let everybody all up in it. Did you know, know what I'm saying? You can't mm -hmm. let everybody all up in those spaces of your relationship because yeah. everybody necessarily don't want positive for you in your relationship and moving forward. I'm trying to think of other things when handling conflict. Um, both my parents have very different styles when it comes to it. So my mom is a verbal processor. So I don't want to say she thinks before she speaks, but she, she thinks and speaks at the same time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times she just has to, when she's talking or going through a conflict, she's literally at that moment piecing it together and breaking it down in her head. Mm -hmm. And to say something, then 10 minutes be like, oh, well, I meant it this way. I done thought about this. Okay. But my father, before he says anything, he's going to think it over 10 times. And then whatever he says, that is how he felt. That is the beginning, middle, the end. That is the thesis. That is the conclusion. <laughs> you can take that to the bank. Yes, because that's it. I don't process it. I don't went through it. So I think through both of their styles, I think it's a time and place for both of them. And I'm learning through that how, you know, to kind of come together in my own style. So I think sometimes you have to be able to process it. Like sometimes I appreciate from my mom, sometimes you just have to be off the cuff mm -hmm. and you have to let your emotions be out. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be raw. I think that's where you can have some breakthroughs. But I think I appreciate my dad's more thoughtfulness is you don't have to always win. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I got from him. Like even if you're right, I think if you in a real strong relationship, knowing that you always don't got to win i'm putting air quotes because yeah. nobody wins we're on the same team right but to the point where just going back and forth it don't what is that proven so right. I, I think i'm just i took bits and pieces of all of them and kind of mashed it together and created um nyambi mm -hmm. what would you say um th th this is a very interesting question so um my parents also didn't argue in public and uh, they did all their arguing or you know conflict um within house yeah. um I witnessed very few of them, mm -hmm. but the ones I did witness, no shit was toxic, son. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so you know that's one of the things that I I, I definitely brought as well is like this whole thing of like keeping, um, and I won't even say dirt or what mm -hmm. not like that, but keeping like the arguments or disagreements like within the house and knowing that you don't have to. Uh, expel it out in the public and know mm -hmm. and letting the public public know. And the yeah. thing is, I want to be clear. I don't even. That's not to the point where you're letting people think. 
that your uh, life yeah, is perfect. Every, everything's perfect. Because it's not that. Uh-huh. I think when I viewed it with my parents, it's a level of intim- intimacy that yeah. was in that. Yeah. So it's not. So that's why I also said when we're out in public, we would disagree. Yeah. But it's to the level of which that you disagree to. Yeah. Like you should disagree. be at a, like a double date or movie and y'all niggas out here fucking arguing. And shit like that. True, like Cause when you really get to that point, if you're that emotionally vested and fired up, it's something else. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's that, that's what I wanted to kind of get to. Cause usually when you start these arguments, it's rooted in something else mm-hmm. and really get into what is the core of it. It ain't about the corn. It ain't about that. It's about X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Does that make sense? Exactly. It's not about putting up uh, a facade for other people to say, Oh no, we don't argue. No, it's mm-hmm. not that, not that. But usually through, oh, it should be conversation, but conflict comes this true sense of intimacy and discovery um, as the couple. Yeah. And, and that's what happens. And but that should be done in a more intimate setting. That's what I believe. I completely agree. And I also believe like the, the, the world or the outside public, even your friends, your family, is not privy to that type of information. Or not mm-hmm. that information, but that level of intimacy between me and my partner. Yeah. Truthfully. Mm-hmm. And it, it and if it's a, a, a deeper problem than that, like yes. I, I think something that um I think both of our parents didn't do that we, we were more likely to do is go to therapy and like yeah. add in a a, a third, third party, yeah. a motherfucker who don't know us, if they gonna judge us, yeah. we, we ain't that shit ain't coming back. They gotta keep comfortable in theology and shit like that. So yeah. um I think that's something that um, we do that necessarily fans, friends, family, or parents won't ne- necessarily do. It's yeah. like we're going to go to this black therapist and we're going to hash it out in this third party. Absolutely. I mean, because that's just some weight you don't want to put on your friends yeah. either. Like that. They got their own shit going on and you're going to add this extra weight of your weight on it, your mess. And I think another mm-hmm. thing is like adding that type of thing. So if you got a friend who's always falling out with their significant other yeah. and then you up in there, you don't really don't know where to be at. Yeah. You you always like well fuck that nigga fuck that nigga <laughs> leave him leave yeah. leave and then he back and it just kind of puts you in a weird way yes especially if the you know that yeah, that friend tells that partner like well you know we was going through this and such and such told me to leave your ass because <laughs> it always come out on pillow it, it comes out so it like you, I feel like you shouldn't put your friends in that type of predicament to yeah. be like well leave leave that nigga yeah. he ain't shit exactly. and then y'all get back together they yeah. get married and live happily ever after mm-hmm. not a husband looking at you crazy Side or or the, or the woman wife, yeah. looking at your ass crazy because you didn't told they you didn't told your friend to leave that leave a sorry ass <laughs> <laughs> he a delta man <laughs> <laughs> but okay so we talked about you know our parents and kind of the role models that we have how do you think we handle it as a couple your uh, opinion i think i mentioned it like um, no, you touched on it. You uh, ain't mentioned it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Tell excuse, the triple shame the devil. Excuse the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the things that we do great again is hey, we go to therapy when it's a problem that we really can't uh, squash ourselves. I think therapy is part of our. I don't even know what it's called. Not professional development, uh-huh. um, <laughs> but personal development, like yeah. personal our relationship development, yeah. like. Even if it's nothing bad, like yeah. I feel like if we're not consistently seeing the therapist every couple of years, we like, all right, let's do a touch in. Mm-hmm. If I'm not personally seeing the therapist, if you're not seeing the therapist or as a couple, mm-hmm. I think we just do it as a check in. I'm trying to think of the word I'm thinking, like mm-hmm. not code of conduct, but. No, I, I know what you're saying. Like it, it's something that. It's part of our maintenance. Yeah. It's our relationship maintenance is to see a counselor mm-hmm. i think it's important and i think some of the good things that we learn from like going to a therapist or you know couples counseling and things of that sort it's this whole notion of like checking in yeah and being like knowing that you know the, what triggers your partners have and just being like hey like let's check in real quick like yeah your face is screwed up like what's going on You're let's just check in, in how are you feeling right now and i think sometimes uh a lot of couples don't do that and i think no. that's something you just need to do yeah. You know, I don't know if it comes with the whole notion of being touched by white hands yes. or whatever, but that whole yeah, notion yes. or like just calling spade a spade, like let's check in. What's going on? Yeah. What else? You got anything else? Um, No, I think it's good. I mean, I'm trying to think of like the rougher spot. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of, you know, when it's bad, what does it look like? What does it look like when it's in a real rough space? I th- I think what could be difficult sometimes when we have our conflict is I think I take out from my mom and I'm a verbal processor. Mm hmm. And when I'm in it, I'm going to go through it. Oh my God. Yes, you do. And Niram's just like, I need no. a moment. 
And I'm like, no moments. Nope. Let's and, figure it out yeah. right now. <laughs> and that's just and that's just not the way that I process things. And yeah. I think, you know, sometimes that do have a uh, I won't say negative connotation, but it does have it kind of adds hard. to the fuel to the fire sometimes to be like, hey, like I need I need you to back the fuck off me so I can think this through. Because when it comes to like conflict and things of that sort, I'm definitely a type of guy. Um, a, you know, you know, younger and things of that sort, I used to have like a temper problem, and like going through anger management and you know figuring out that type of stuff. That you know, some of the uh, mechanisms that I use to like stay calm and things of that sort. Um, Naomi know how to tip tap on that. Yes. Um, on the fact that that's how she is, or what you know, keep pressing the issue, and you know we gonna move through this, and we gonna work through this, and I'm more or less like, I need you to back, you, I need you to back the fuck up because I'm getting angry, and if I get angry, this conversation is not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's something we really had to work through, mm-hmm. um, as a couple, knowing when to say when, and like near I'm giving me cues. I am be. I need two hours. Mm-hmm. In two hours, we can do X, Y, and Z. Right. Or also me recognizing it in me too to know. Okay, so do I really want to work through this, or am I, am I trying to tick him off? Like, mm-hmm. is this my way of? Is this passive aggressive? Right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So really recognizing that energy in myself too, and that comes through self work. So knowing that you know when I do this, it's not always a productive. It doesn't always come from a productive, no. thoughtful place. Sometimes it comes from a very selfish, selfish place. Um, and just recognizing that stuff. And again, we learn through what counseling. Yeah, I'm telling y'all, everybody need to see a counselor at least one time in their life. And every couple <laughs> need to go through counseling at least for a month. Yeah, I, just, I agree. And, and also, I think I want to reiterate. I think every time we talk about counseling, it's this negative thing around it. We've seen a counselor and we've been 100 percent great, just like just then. happy. It, like we just like well, we just want to know how to maintain this, right. how to battle this up, and how do we continue forward. So right. I think you know counselors even help that, and it's different types of counselor. You know we believe you know most on the little brown counselor now and navigating through that, but there's counselors that are like for your sexual health, like it's all types of counselors that you can see. But if you want to go on more of a spiritual journey, like there's somebody in the taste for everybody mm-hmm. no matter you know what do you think is going on in your relationship how to navigate that it's counselors who specialize in helping folks figuring out finances all those things exist so i think it's just really it's about do, doing the work yeah what Vaughn said, you have to do the work yeah and really figuring out what works for yourself but I, one piece of advice that i could not give over and over to the community is to one find a counselor or a therapist personally and find a counselor or therapist if you're in a couple yeah um in a relationship i should say I agree. So, you know, another question I have is like, how did your parents handle finances? Finances, yeah. yeah. Um, they were pretty, they split it down the middle, I mm. would say. Like, um, how, how do I explain it? So they each had their own individual bills, right? Mm. Um, but when it came to like the mortgage and the big bills, like my dad definitely would cover that. Um, but it, it just depends where they were in their relationship. So there were times where like my dad would come and this is the whole check. Mm-hmm. Here you go. And he would tell my mom, just take care of everything and divide it up. There were times where she was making more and she would go to him and say, since I'm working more, making more, here's the whole check. Make sure all the bills get paid. Mm-hmm. So I think the way they work their financials is very um, situational. Um, from what I see, you know, of course, I don't got the checkbook or nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like a lot of their money is definitely intermingled. And it just depends on who's making what at that time, mm-hmm. what kind of bill that they're taking on. Um, but I will say as just – how they navigate with finances, my dad's definitely more of the financial savvy mm. um, than my mom is, meaning that he's more likely to save more, always say he one of them folks who say they broke but never broke. <laughs> my dad old school black man from Detroit. <laughs> he still we go out to dinner, he count his money under the table. <laughs> I'm like, where you come with this roll of money? Like, who just walk around with this roll of money? Mm. Or like my dad would be like, okay, if you need this, he'd be like, oh, come get me. You know, I remember being a child, put it this way. You know, you had to get lunch money, right? Then he'd be like, all right, I'll be back. He'll go in the room, close the door, and come back to give me the money. I was like, for $10? Like, where are you hiding $10 at? Or if I'm going somewhere and I need a little bit more change. You know, you always got to have money in the house somewhere, right? Yeah. He'll go in the basement, go in the room. We're like, where? I'm like, mom, where is he going? He'd be like, I don't know what he had. He just had money in the walls. I don't know what he's doing. Like, he, he that type. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, here, a little piece of change. And my mom be like, child, I don't got no more. It's gone. I'm like, where it go? She said, you see them purses? 
She said, I believe in living now. <laughs> she was like, I done paid myself and my savings. My bills is paid. This is disposable. I'm going to enjoy myself. Where my dad, where you really got to force him to be like, yes, maybe you should buy some shoes. Maybe you problem. should, you know, let, let loose that money a little bit. Let mm-hmm. loose a little bit. So I think that's how they're both different. But um, that's more so in spending. But their finances was definitely intermingled. And they go back and forth with whoever was the bread or brung home the most money at that time. Mm-hmm. And executing uh, money and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Nair? <coughs> oh, oh, you done shit. coughed in a mic? <coughs> this got Zika on you. Oh, man. Wait a minute. I choked on my own damn spit. Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, I think my parents' situation is different um, just on the fact you, at, at the beginning, okay. while they was there, you know, they. You all right over there? Yeah. Man. Um, they. Um, they also like did did the splitting of the bills, and it was very situational. But you know, halfway through my life, you know, they split up. So it, it came to the point where my mother took care of all the bills with her, and my father took all the bills at his house. But when then she started, um, they did this thing where my father took care of the mortgage, and like my mother took care of like the utility bills and things of that sort and then whatever other expenses they had in their car notes and things of that sort Mm -hmm. they split it that way yeah and then you know when they separated obviously my mother took care of her stuff my father took care of his stuff yeah 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 yeah. well how do you think this relates to how you know our relationship is um i I think what i said and what you said i think it's a you know it's definitely like a hybrid of like your parents my parents and i think it's very situational um, you know, even though we've been together for this long time, you know, we're still, you know, in the process of, you know, figuring out how to um, combine incomes. Like, uh-huh. yes, you know, yeah. uh, you know, someone takes the, the lead for the mortgage and, you know, another person takes the lead for like the utilities and things of that sort. And depending on where we at or each person at, that always switches off. Yes. Or, you know, it's all, you know, it just depends on where we at. Like, it switches off where, you know, it'd be times where I'll take over the mortgage and the HOA and you take over utilities. It's been times where I've took over everything. It's been times where you took over everything. And it's been times where I was like, you know, I got a little cash, here's some money on the HOA. So I think it's very uh, hybrid and very situational, but I think that's something that um, we're still trying to figure out. Mm-hmm as a couple on more or less like what what it's going to look like for us of like what it means to be like quote unquote like combining of incomes and Everything. you know having all these joint accounts and things of that sort Absolutely. like yes we have access to all our accounts you know just in case something happens but you know having this official agreement of you know every single coin because there's some couples where there are no separate accounts yes now see that's what i battle with mm-hmm. i i think everybody need to have their own se- at I least agree. one separate account mm-hmm. you know and not that you can't have access to it or know that it exists, but I think it's important, especially as a woman, that you have your own um, access to your own account. So that's something that I'd even need to work through. Like even I think twenty years down the road, Nyambi always gonna have her own. And I agree. And I recommend all ladies have their own little piece of something on the side. Mm-hmm. You know, you might even need that account that nobody know about. Just your mama, your mama and Jesus. So I, I, that's something I always navigate with. But I think something that we done well with save is saving. Yeah, most definitely. So the although you know. Our primary accounts might be separate. We always kept a strong savings that regardless, we'll be able to go through it and make sure that we, you know, able to live if something happens with jobs or anything. We've always been very, very secure on that. So I think that's something that's very admirable. And the way that we do that is no matter what we get paid, be it checks, tax returns, everything, we always take a percent, at least what, 10% of that, if Mm -hmm. not more, and put that aside and and don't touch it at all. And that's been our saving grace as a couple. That has been really our savings grace as a couple. And and believe it or not, over these years, you know, we've been fortunate enough not to have to, you know, really use that. And when we did have to go into that, you know, you kind of look at the account and be like, oh, yeah. We okay. Like, yeah, we you know, could. you know, thank goodness, you know, we decided to, you know, invest and put that aside. So I know, you know, we're very young on this journey and moving forward, but I think it's just something about putting like that emergency account away. Yeah, like if that's the only thing you can do as a unit, just put as a couple, yeah. at least just start there. Just start there. Because I do think it is a little bit more difficult in the idea of combining yeah. everything. And I think that's more or less... Uh, it's definitely something like because then I to. have an attitude if I see too much, uh, I don't know Pizza Hut on there. How about like, you don't want the Pizza Hut twice this week? 
And before we had to say nothing but two hundred dollars. Right. Now I see ten ninety nine. I'm mad. Yeah, you, you didn't see ten ninety nine. And I ain't gonna spice our pizza. You didn't see ten ninety nine thirty times on it. <laughs> Hold up, now. I know there was a two hundred dollar limit, but you didn't spend ten dollars thirty times. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? But you know, on? I think yeah. that stuff you work through. You know, but that's that. Like I think about that type of stuff mm-hmm. and think of where we come because we even have a checking account that's combined. But we use that more like we're on vacation, you know, traveling, or traveling. So, so. And yeah. things like that and i think we're even getting to the point where we're going to have it all combined and we were even able to keep it separate all this time and us owning a home together mm-hmm. but I, it, there is benefits of combining it all together and i do think we're going to get to that point in the next couple years i'm curious about the folks that have it all like i know girlfriends that they have no side account it's i'm like jesus account. i have to have something under my bed <laughs> or i have to hide something in the backyard like james brown <laughs> Crazy? You know to hide it in your bra, <laughs> and just have it with me all times, <laughs> just in a ziploc bag, right? Just, just a piece of change. No, it, and I think you know, with you know, my my parents not getting married and breaking up and things of that sort, you know, it, it's definitely imperative to have like that separate side account. Yeah. But you know, I think one of the things that fathers me is like how the whole process of combining accounts together yeah. and being like, all right, this is the joint of money, and this then. Is- and, and, and then, like, you know what uh, Karen Harold was saying, like, you know, you got to have these agreements where, yeah. you know, anything below $200 is fair game. Yeah. And, like, having that conversation and then looking at your account, like, what the hell? You know, Naomi, what the Marshall, she don't went and bought some more candles. Naomi, what the hell are you buying? <laughs> so, like, and, and getting yeah. over that, because yeah. I know, you know, I'm a type of person, I look at my bank account, like, multiple times a day. I and, know. And so I can only imagine, like, <laughs> Naomi ain't got some gas. And she didn't, Naomi, you didn't tell me you went to Marshall's? <laughs> when you go have lunch at such and such? Yeah. You bring me something back? Yeah, see, that's what we greedy. We worried about that. <laughs> we want some sides. But I admire, like, I go back and forth. I admire couples that have 100% like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I truly admire it. Like, you know, I, I think we're always going to have some form of hybrid, and eventually we'll move with the majority of our funds is in that joint account. Yeah. But you know, it's something about the readings of Baldwin um, being raised by strong black women that something was just told me you always got to have your own on the side. How do you feel about that, though? Like, no. what are your thoughts on? I know how I feel about mm-hmm. it, but what are your thoughts on, you know, me having like a side account? Like, do you feel like you need to have access to it? You need to be on the account or you just need to be aware of the account? Um, No, you know, I, I, I completely agree. If you have an side account, you should have one and I should have one, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you slid that in there huh? okay you know you should have one and i should have one too and i always felt like you know you should have your own separate monies to do whatever you want with yeah. um that's unadulterated unfiltered but i think you know one of the, the other things is that you know since we are an excommunicate thing and um you know god forbid if something happens you know i just want to be able to you know be able to access that money if i need to yeah. so yeah i ain't gotta know i ain't gotta know what's in it Truthfully, I ain't gotta have you know. Um, I I ain't gotta have like more or less access to it, but you know, me having a name on there, you know, me having my name on there, and you know, and being able to go get it with uh, a power attorney letter or a death yeah. certificate to, you know, you utilize and access that money forever your benefit is. I yeah. think that's more or less where I feel. About Absolutely, that. I yeah. agree with the same thing. Like you don't have to know. I don't even really want to know the amount in it. I yeah. know some people are like, well, care. how much is in there? I don't, I don't, I don't care either. You know, long as you hitting all the expectations that we set for each other mm-hmm. as a unit of how much we're saving um, for emergency retirement, wherever it is, and all our bills are paying our disp- disposable income, mm-hmm. fine, and everything else. I do believe is extra. Now, ladies, if you got you a tick, tick, boom, boom, you don't tell them about this, <laughs> even if you're married to them. So if you're trying, this, this is side talk. Come close. So. If you married to a tick, tick, boom, boom, and you're trying to get out of it, what you do, you get your mama on the account or your best friend on the account, and y'all two be on the account, mm. and you put that money away. All right. Whoops. All righty. I'm just saying for the folks who yeah. like, because sometimes you got to get out, because that, that's the other thing. I think we have a very unique relationship where we both equally bring mm. coins to the table, but there's some folks out there where it is one breadwinner, mm. and they control the money. It, I shouldn't say control it, but they bring in all the money. And so that means they have heavy oversight of it. And if you're in a tick, tick, boom, boom relationship and they have oversight, all the money, how are you supposed to get out with no money? Right. You siphon that money, honey. Put a little $20 in the bag at a time. 
Put a little over there. Twenty dollars at a time, and yeah. you siphon it, and you get you a little part time at a bot store like Nyan B. Come on. And <laughs> I just got to spit the wisdom to the girls. Go well, ahead. Tell that truth. Yeah. Also, I think another thing that um, most couples that I don't see do is talk about their credit scores. Yes, credit scores are very important. You know, and you know, credit is this thing that we all need. Because credit can be built. Like, yeah. even if you have trash ass credit, there's a way. You know, it may take time. I ain't going to mm. say this is going to happen in two months, but it's a way to build your credit up and clean it up too. Mm. And also just be strategic with it. So, you know, if one person got amazing credit, another person got bad credit, Depending on what y'all goals is, it's some stuff y'all might want to keep separate. Yeah. So you can get a house with a decent, you know, um, interest rate. And we're going to talk about this. We know some folks in our comments asked to talk about the house. Mm -hmm. We're trying to sell this one, but it might have to come a little sooner and do the uh, prepping for buying a house. Right. But I think it is very, very important to talk about credit score and to be open and transparent. I think credit scores and like STD tests are the same. Word of mouth is not enough. You need the paper. Yeah, I need papers. And and I think this is one of the things that we just do uh, during conversations that Uh you know, I'll be like, what was your credit score this month? Yeah. And and vice versa. So it's something you got to have this conversation with because you never know. You need to buy a house. You need to do something. Yeah. Buy a car. Shit. And there's ways yeah. to do it. So, you know, if you're trying to help your significant other build their credit and you have a really strong credit card, um, credit score, you can add them as authorized users on your credit card. And say if they like to spend a little too much, just because they're authorized users, that don't mean you give them the damn right. credit card. Come on. You know, we got tips on that. So, you know, maybe um, I think that's something we'll talk more about, like when buying a house and mm. saving for the house and making sure your credit score is where they need to be. So it's a way to navigate through that. Yeah, I don't ever really remember my parents talking about credit scores and things of mm. that nature. I mean, I'm assuming they had decent credit scores because they were able to buy multiple homes. Mm. But no, that's not something I remember as a child them talking to. But I, I can imagine we talking to our child yeah, a lot about yeah. the importance of credit. And, and that's the thing. Like, I'm the type of kid who had a service merchandise. Ooh, service card. merchandise? Come <laughs> on, I had a service merchandise uh, credit card in my name since I was 10. Oh, my goodness. Shout out to you, mama. What? <laughs> you know better, you do better. So, yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, that a conversation of um, credit within, you know, the couple and even your friends to yes. figure out what's going on because you, in this day and age, credit Sometimes you can't get yeah. a job. Out here, yeah. they ask you for your credit score at your job. And also, when you rent an apartment, they ask you for your yeah. credit score. So sometimes there's no way to get it. It can out. really hold you up. And then I think lastly, um, this idea of finances, I think it's important for you to talk about how you view finances and money. Some people view money very differently. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of even when I was saying about my parents, like my mom believed in a good bag and a good shoe. But my dad, you got to beg him to go buy a shoe and the shoe about to, uh, it's talking to you. So I think that can also make a break of relation. I know we was teasing about like food and all that stuff, but that stuff can be irritating. If yeah. you, you know, some folks not used to going out weekly or multiple times a week, or, you know, we got friends out there who don't cook, right? who go out daily. Day. Yeah. And your spouse looking like, you know how much money you spend at Panera? <laughs> like, you know, so I, I think those are important to talk about. Like those pieces of finance, that's the stuff that make you ticky, ticky, boom, boom. And that's the stuff that you have to be aware of in a couple Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, one more question, uh, and then we can move on. Mm-hmm. This last question: uh, What are some other things? And I know we kind of wrapped this up, but I just want to wrap this up and over. Like, what are some things that you learned that you decided not to do, or oh. and or to use in this relationship? Oh, that's a really good one. Um, you mean about communication? Yeah, communi- finan- yeah. anything. Yeah, communication, finance, or anything like that. I think the biggest thing to do is constantly talk about finances and be able to switch back and forth Mm -hmm. so i think what my parents did really gracefully is depending on who made the most money at that time they were able to shift um um how do i explain it the roles in in the relationship like so i would say my parents really weren't heavy on this idea of gender roles so i think when it comes to finances it's very much you know the man should be doing x y and z and then the woman should be doing this that was definitely shattered in my household so that's something i'm going to continue to move forward Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. okay and and i would definitely agree and i think you know for our communication part um something that my parents didn't do that we do is um the 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 going the whole therapy part like mm. you know talking bringing in that third person uh you know if we are definitely bumping heads and bumping our heads uh, uh over something that's revolving and keep you know keep coming around 
we definitely go and bring a third person into it. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know you say you're wrapping it up. I'm just thinking about maybe some tips and things we didn't cover um, while we were talking. So some things I would say is that you have to always stop and listen. Um, But when you're stopping and listening, you you really have to force yourself to hear. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So a lot of times I know when folks are in communication with each other, you're almost just waiting to speak. Mm-hmm. You're like, eventually they'll stop sp- talking so I can then speak and counteract them. But really forcing yourself to hear what your partner is saying. Mm-hmm. And I know it sounds corny. Like sometimes you got to repeat what the hell they just said to get it out. Because I know some things that Nero them said, it translated in my head to be a whole different ball game. And he'd be like, that is not what I said. And I'm like, I ain't here. I already got my comeback. Right. Let's move forward. Um, some other things I think we touched on, I think it's an important tip is to be open and honest. Yeah. If you got you a low ass credit score, you need to say something. If you got some past two bills, you need to say something. If you made a bet on something, you need to say something. <laughs> and the thing is, and I think with this whole being open and honest is that you have to show vulnerability when you're a yes. partner, like being in a committed relationship, married, whatever, like this is probably like the only person that you can be the most vulnerable with. And if yes. you can't be that vulnerable with nobody, with that person, maybe this person ain't for you. Yeah. But, you know, being vulnerable, being open, you know, being completely unadulterated yourself and opening up to that person, mm-hmm. you know, and, and open up to the possibilities to be hurt and to be disappointed. Yeah, I agree. That's, I agree. that's what relationship is. Yes. Next, I would say is pay attention to nonverbal signals. Now, this is maybe something I should have said that I wish my parents did more. So nonverbal communication, that's like your body language. So the tone of your voice is your um, it's your inflection, eye contact, how far away you are when you're talking with someone. Um, And learning to communicate better means that you need to learn how to read these different signals to really understand and hearing what the person's saying. So this idea of folding arms, not making eye contact, um, when you're saying yes and shaking your head no, like I think those are huge things. Like I do now remember back to, you know, if my parents have a disagreement in the body language. I think my father had more body language and my mom would never pick up on it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, don't you see he done? <laughs> and she just going and going and going. Yeah. Like the energizer bunny. And it's just like, don't you just see it? So I think that idea of nonverbal signals are huge. I know me with Niram, I always have to check his nonverbals. I don't have a lot of nonverbals. All my stuff come out very verbal. But Niram has a ton of nonverbals that I have to be hyper aware of. I could just walk in the room and depending on how Niram is sit, I could be like, what's wrong? What's going on? So I think that's a huge one. What do what you think, Niram? Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think another one is like just being staying focused in here and now. Mm. You know, I think when it comes to arguments, um, since you are trying to win this so-called battle of words, you kind of actually leave the topic at hand and go into mm-hmm. some other shit that made you mad. Absolutely. Um, the and, trash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Nyambi is good for talking Ooh, about the trash. some dang on trash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think that's where like these cheap shots come in and like bringing up things that didn't have nothing to do with um, the argument or the topic at hand. So, you know, make sure you stay in the here and now and, you know, try not to veer off the conversation into something that's really not related yeah the next thing that i like to also say is be ready to like seed an argument you cannot always go in even if you write i think i brought this up earlier even if you write sometimes an Mm -hmm. argument you have to be willing air quotes not to win it yeah and i think uh there's one more thing to add to this before we move on is uh making sure you have humor and playfulness like Mm -hmm. In an argument, you know, you don't have to be, like, super funny, but adding, like, some type of humor or playfulness into it can definitely lighten the mood um, uh, of, like, everyday frustrations and things of that sort. So, it's been times where me and Naomi Naomi got into, you know, an argument, and I said a joke, or she said a joke, and we just started laughing, and you just can't help but to love that individual and laugh at them and be like, you know what? You got me here, but you know you was wrong. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So overall, y'all, remember that your partner is not your adversary or someone you have to win against. 
just create a win-win situation. It's important that you both come on top together and win um, together. So truly come to the point where you're seeking to understand your partner, um, I think, in the whole overall process. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, you know, what Papa said, there's no winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no competition. So... Be you know, open, be yeah. honest, be trusting, be trustworthy to one another, be vulnerable to each other, and most of all, importantly, be protective of each other, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. We got some Kitchen Table Talk. Of course. Um, as always, to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. This reads, Dearum, Nyambi, exclamation point. <laughs> hey. I am so glad you all talked about the different types of people, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, because it reminded me of a question I wanted to ask you all. One of your earlier podcasts, you interviewed two of your married family members. Forgive me for not remembering who they are exactly. One face that stuck out the most is, they, she paraphrased it, there can only be one leader in a relationship. What do you all think about that? Do generals play a part in who leads the relationship? Thank you. Your brust is cuss. Mm. Well, that's a great question. It is. Um, I think a few folks said that. So I know my parents is on there, but also I probably Al and Garrett probably said that too. Yeah, Al and Mary, yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds different for me. You know, I believe it. You know, I'm a strong black woman, but I don't think there can be two leaders at the same times in the relationship. But what I think happens is, and what I think the beauty in Niram and our relationship is, that we're able to fluidly pass that role back and forth. So I think that depending on the situation and the context and what's going on with the individual person, it's important for you all. It goes back to communication, mm-hmm. to have this understanding of when do you need someone to step in. So I think on certain contexts, I would rather Niram step up and be the leader and guide us and navigate us through this. And then also in other areas, I'm more proficient. Does that make sense? And I think I need to step up and take the lead and move forward. But on a more vulnerable piece, there's some times where maybe I am taking the lead or Niram's assuming I'm taking the lead. I'm able to just look at him and not say a word. And he know you need to step up and you need to to take it on. Because I think that's the beauty of a relationship, that you don't always have to be on 100%. You have someone that already has your back and moving forward. So I don't see it as a negative. I see it as somewhere where I can truly let my guard down and be completely um, and wholly vulnerable in that situation. And do gender roles play a part in who leads the relationship? I think sometimes it can. I think it just depends on a relationship. Um, Our sneer, I mean, you can speak on it too. Um, some some things we have we have very traditional gender roles and sometimes we don't but I think also what we commit to each other is that we're willing to jump in and out of that I hate taking out the trash but if I gotta take out that trash I'll take out that trash Neom don't like vacuum and clean up in the house I don't mind it but if something happened to me he gonna have to jump in and be able to do that like I even think of something drastic you know God forbid something happened to me we have children Yo, you gotta learn how to take care of this house it ain't about no gender roles and leading you gotta step up and do what the fuck you gotta do why are, you, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> but no, I think that's just yeah, the beauty of our relationship. And some stuff we just completely agree. Like, yes, that's your wheelhouse. Go run. But at any moment, we're, we're willing to jump into it, too. Yeah. What do you um, think, Just to piggyback off that, yes. You know, even though every even though a relationship is a partnership, mm-hmm. I do truly and wholly believe that there can only be one, uh, one, one leader in a relationship. At a time. At, at a time. You know, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a dictatorship yeah. or anything like that, but it is, it's this whole thing of, like, being on the same page. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, how I like to think of it, like, relationship is, you know, a project. And, like, every yeah, every project. situation yeah. needs a, a project manager. That's, that's a better way to say it. Maybe yeah. leader is not the right word. Project manager. I completely agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, do, does gender roles kind of play in this, you know, in this thing? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I lean on more or less to saying like no to it depends. Uh, you know, in our relationship, I think it's very situational. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think it really depends on, like you were saying, like who who will house we're playing in. So yeah. if it comes to like being, you know, planning or being calculating or very thoughtful. Wait, I'm not calculating. I'm thoughtful. I, I said calculating and, and or no, I'm and not thoughtful. calculating. I'm thoughtful. Tomato, tomato. Uh-huh. Uh you know, I, I'll tend to lean on Nyambi, but when it comes to like, you know, gut reaction or anything creative or something 
more or less on that type of thing, you know, we'll lean more or less on me. But I think, you know, most of our decisions uh, on this comes on this whole um, notion of who will house this is and, Mm -hmm. you know, what our partner needs at that time. Because there's been times where, you know, we have a, a conversation about something that just needs to be done and we'll say, you know what, like I'll take the lead on it. Yeah, or we physically you will say, take the lead on it. Yeah. yeah, we literally say, you taking the lead on it? I need you, to, or we'll say, I need you to take the lead on this. I cannot do this. Yeah. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing mm-hmm. that you can have a relationship. Because sometimes it could be, sorry, Detroit, but it'd be family. You yeah. take the lead on it. I can't handle my family. Mm-hmm. You handle it. Right. You take the lead on this trip. Or it's nice when you can go out with people and uh-huh. be like, I'm tired. You take the lead. Yeah. I just smile and be the partner. <laughs> Ooh, ain't nothing better than when you're tired, you go out and you can just smile and shake your head and mm-hmm. nod. And you be like, I'm going to need you to. I even think of the things like, I'm going to need you to be on tonight. Yeah. Like, I'm going to need you to be charismatic. I have no stories to tell. I have. I don't want to engage. I would like to just sit my drink and eat my appetizer. Mm-hmm. Your turn. <laughs> and and, and it, it is like that. And I think that's more or less that whole notion of being a project matter versus a project manager versus like this whole thing of like being one leader in a relationship. Yeah, I, yeah, think, I like yeah. the idea of being project manager completely better. Like, mm-hmm. I, yeah, than leader. Because leader sounds so definitive. Yeah. Like, there can be no changes. And this is only where, like, in the middle of a project, we can switch project yeah. managers. Like, that's how we will be. Yeah. So. Good, good answer. Man. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, was good thank answer. you for that question. That's a no good problem. question. Yeah, shout out to you, sis break us. Yeah, thank you. Keep yeah. them coming. Absolutely. Um, to submit to Black Love Stories, be sure to head to blacklovematters.com. To submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. And to leave us a comment about anything that we talked about today, be sure to do that on blacklovematters.com or SoundCloud um, or any form of our social medias. Remember, we can be found at Black Love Matters. Remember, that's Black Love Matters with no K. And don't forget, we got that voicemail, y'all. So we can be reached at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. And remember, love love is is ever ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.